The root of David. He is the bright morning. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha. Over the mountain, over, over the, the mountain, mountain. The to the deep yeah. Don't you know that Jesus has said I, well the Lord said, I'm never leaving you. Oh Lord, that's a promise, divine word, it's a promise that never can fail. To the Grace View Church of Christ's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Grace View SC. We have all of our Passion for Christ episodes archived on that YouTube channel. Plus, we have sermon material and Bible lessons and even a cappella singing that can help you out in your walk in life. Make sure you tune into the Grace View Church of Christ in Anderson YouTube channel. Give you one question. You ever been talking to somebody on the telephone, on your cell phone, and the and the call dropped? And as soon as they came back on the phone and called you, then they said, Did you hang up on me? Or they say, What happened? Now, as long as you has had a cell phone, you know that calls drop. Why do you ask the person what happened? Why would you ask that question? And do you know how many people have had an argument? You know, when people ask me that, I said, as a matter of fact, I did hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they don't know how to respond now. Yeah, I did hang up. Yeah, after I found out you weren't there, I hung up. Yeah, all right. So you cannot give a godly answer to an ungodly question. See, stop much of your frustrating arguing. Yeah. Unnecessarily over questions that do not lead anywhere. Now here's the second thing. Now you cannot give an un, a godly answer to an ungodly question. And then number two, you ought not give, you ought not give an ungodly answer to a godly question. You ought not to give an ungodly answer to a godly question. Now let's look at the second question recorded in human history. God said to Adam, where are you? Look at verse number nine of Genesis chapter three. The Bible says that Adam heard God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And he said, uh, where are you? You know, that's always been an interesting question. See, God is the master of psychology. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever heard your children rattling the cookie jar? And you say to them, what are you doing? You didn't ask that question so you would know what they were doing. You knew what they were doing. You heard the cookie jar. You heard them rattling the candy sack. You told them to turn the television off. You heard the television come back on, but you said to them, what are you doing? Why did you ask that question? Because you wanted them to process their behavior currently in their minds. So God said to Adam, where are you? He knew exactly where Adam was. Adam's response ignored the word of God. Now God said, where are you? Adam said, we heard your voice. We were afraid and we hid among the trees in the garden we hid among the trees in the garden you ever thought about that they hid among the trees you ever watch children play the game of hide and seek listen a, a child will hold up his hand over his eyes and say you can't see me why does a child do that? 
Listen, the, the less mature the child is, the less adequate the things are, they'll try to hide behind. You know, a child will try to hide behind their mama's leg and say, you can't see me. Because, see, the child thinks that because I can't see you, you can't see me. And all the child has done was hidden their eyes. And the rest of their body is full exposure. God said to Adam, where are you? He said, I heard and I hid in the garden. You need to learn how to answer questions. Now, when you do that, it's going to simplify your life. You need to learn how to answer questions. You need to learn how. Because questions are forever going to be a part of our human experiences. You walk into the mall, someone says, can I help you? What did you come to buy? Always asking you questions. And your frustration stems from the questions that you attempt to answer. Or you dig a deeper hole. Some of us have had this experience. We knew we should have said no in the first place. And we didn't say no. And we got further in trouble. You know, I don't like eggnog. I don't know who started it, but whoever made it, I hope they can get to heaven. But man, I tell you, eggnog. And, and, and I don't know why. I, as far back as I, I remember in the first grade, being given some eggnog at school. And I hated it. Uh, I hated it. So a friend of mine said to me one day, we, a preacher friend of mine, we went to a meeting together. And he said, John said, the man said, we, uh, Effie has cooked some pie. And said, I want you to have some pie with me when we get back to the house. So I said, Arthur, I'm ready for the pie. So when the meeting was over, he said, let's go get the pie. So we go and we are sitting at the bar at his house. And Effie cuts a slice of eggnog pie. <laughs> that I should have said I'm sorry but I don't now it had been 40 plus years between eggnog experiences so I said well maybe I can stomach it knowing all the time that I should have said no to begin with and I tasted it and it brought back 40 plus year memory <laughs> And I'm serious, I almost have an allergic reaction to eggnog. And, and what I ate last week almost comes back. I'm serious, it just, I just don't, it just doesn't do me. And so I thought, my goodness. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing when someone has cooked some food. Mm -hmm. And Effie is standing in the kitchen and Arthur and I are sitting here. And she's standing right there looking at us. So I spread it over the plate. And it didn't evaporate, it's still there. I tried to eat some of the crust and it tasted the same way and, and I said I, I should have said I don't I, I don't like eggnog pie because now she thinks it's a bad pie and finally she she saw we weren't getting anywhere and she offered me some walnut cookies I ate all of those they were good <laughs> So at least I left with her not thinking that I was opposed to her cooking. But I knew I should have given an answer. to. And listen, the longer I sat there, the worse I felt. And that's what questions do to us. So how do you answer questions? Listen, you need to know how to answer questions. Right. Because, see, sometimes the situation is not going to change, so you need to go ahead and give the right answer now. So the discussion part is over. 
you know, there are some things you're not going to do. You might as well just tell folk you're not going to do that. That's right. That's right. There are some things you are going to do differently. You might as well just go. No need of prolonging the discussion. Listen, if you go in a store, if you're not buying anything today, say to the sales clerk, so listen, I'm not buying anything today. And if you're on commission, you'd be better off to go find somebody who might be buying because you're going to waste, you're not going to sell anything to me today. Yeah. And then they can go find a buying customer. All right. So you cannot give a godly answer to an ungodly question and you ought not to give a godly, an ungodly answer to a godly question. Right. So learn how to answer questions. We're going to answer questions. Now, here's the question. Satan's question to Eve caused her to doubt the word of God. Right. So now here is my question to you. What portion of the word of God are you questioning? Mercy. What portion? You said, oh, I believe all of the word of God. Really? Mercy. Do you believe that part that says you can overcome evil with good? You don't believe that part. Mercy. You have never practiced it. Mm. What portion of the word of God are you questioning? See, there is a little doubt in your mind about something that God has said. You ever get up and wonder... Does God really know me? Does God really know you? Is God really concerned about you? Now, people sometimes said, I know the Lord. That's not the question. The question is, does the Lord know you? I know Barack Obama, but he doesn't know me. So guess what? I don't get any benefit from my knowledge of him. The question is, and so some days there is a little doubt in your mind. Does God know me? And is he really concerned about me? Amen. I know it get up some days and that's a question. That question plagued the Israelites. They said, now, if God loves us like he said he does, then why are all of these bad things happening to us? Right, right questions and guess what the devil plants those questions in your mind right. said if God loved you he wouldn't have let your grandmama die like that Mercy. and so now you're going around doubting the word of God the devil says you know if 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 God really cared about his people and if there really was a God who was concerned about his people then then he wouldn't let that happen to you all uh -huh. and so how you answer that question and so you attempt to try to give a convincing answer. And the more you give an answer, the less, uh, the more futile you begin to feel. Listen, there are some things that happen and I don't know why they happened. Amen. That's right. I don't even know. And I'm not going to try to give you an answer as to why it happened. And then people say, well... Everything happened, happened for a reason. Well, there are some things that happened, but the reason is a no good reason. Yeah, everything that happened is not a good reason. So how you answer the question may very well determine what you do with your faith. What portion of the word of God are you questioning? And then the second question to you is, where, where are you trying to hide? Where are you hiding? What are you hiding behind? Someone said, e, uh, Adam attempted to hide behind the woman. The woman attempted to hide behind the snake. And the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. You know, my daddy, my daddy used to say this. He said, listen, in order to hide behind a snake, You've got to be as crooked as he is. But, but guess what people do? They look and find somebody to hide behind. Children do that. You say, wash the dishes. What's he going to do? Try to hide behind. Well, he didn't mop. Well, what does that got to do to washing the dishes? And then as adults, we do the very same thing. 
How you answer questions will determine what happens to your faith. Don't spend your life trying to answer questions that God has not given us the answers to. Right. And given us the answer to all. If you knew the answer to all questions, you'd be God. But here is what God has done. He has given us enough answers to trust him. He's given us enough answers to trust him. That's why your history is important. My children, my, my baby son, he, he went to college and I'd given him enough evidence for him to trust me I had bought all of his clothes we had bought all of his food we had paid all of his school he, he called me one day and said daddy said uh, I need five hundred dollars I think it was that or more and I said and he told me what he needed it for and I said when do you need it he said, I wrote the check yesterday. Right. <laughs> now, why would he do that? I had never, he had never written a $500 check on me before. But guess what? I had honored the $2 checks enough. He trusted me that he could write $500. Wow. I mean, it was for the school. It wasn't useless stuff it had been useless it, I wouldn't have written it he knew that so what I'm trying to tell you is that when you look at what God has done yes. you can trust him to do things he has not yet done Amen. and so you don't have to hide behind so what are you hiding behind you say well I'd obey the Lord, but I got to have all of my questions answered. Guess what? You ain't going to never obey the Lord. He's not going to answer all of your questions. I mean, who are you to tell the Lord to answer all of your questions? But now here's what God has done. He has answered enough questions to convince you if you're honest. You know, every morning, here's what's so amazing to me. Every morning, the sun rises. The sun rises and lights and heats the universe. You ever realize, you ever thought about that? And it never needs repair. If it needed repair, who's going up there? Who's going up there? Listen, if, if somebody can put a sun in place, that never needs repair I don't have any more questions for him I don't have any more questions for him because if he can do that I don't have any more questions for him I don't have any more questions for him listen if I was in an argument with a person and we were going back and forth and irritating each other and Mike Tyson came up and that person got up and knocked Mike out I don't have no more questions for him I don't have no more questions for him absolutely no more questions for him if, if, if God listen even for a person who says well I, don't, I just can't believe in, 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 a, in a person being God there's a God for, well listen whatever it is or whoever it is that can put the sun in place, just just tell me what they say do. I have no further questions. He has given us enough information to draw the conclusion that we ought to obey him. He's given us enough for that. So what are you trying to hide behind? Now here's what I want you to do as we conclude. You need to learn how to process your questions before you answer them now I'm not saying process them so you can be deceitful but you know people go into the courtroom every day and get in further trouble as a friend of mine who was a truck driver who was speeding and he was given a ticket and he went back he went to court and he he said to the judge he said judge I was not speeding 
He said, how do you know you were not speeding? He said, because I have a radar in my truck. The judge said, you have a radar in my jurisdiction? It was at the time in a state where radars were illegal. Guess what? He got in further trouble. Judge took his radar and gave him the full penalty. Yeah. How do you answer questions? How do you answer questions? Makes a world a difference. Some of the frustration that you're experiencing right now comes because you did not know how or you did not answer the question properly. And you kept going back and forth with the question and got yourself further in trouble. Amen. So process the question. You cannot give a godly answer to an ungodly question. And you ought not to give an ungodly answer to a godly question. So questions that are not going to amount to anything, just put them over to the side. Yes, and then give proper answers to proper questions. Amen. And then you will notice much of your frustration will leave. Much of... You, you ever had one of these questions? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Any of your brothers or sisters ever asked you that question? You the younger. Who do you think you are? And guess what you start trying to do? Answer that question. And guess what? All it does is turn into a family dispute. Who do you, listen, Jesus shows us how to, how to answer those questions. Jesus was talking to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. And he said, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me and I would have given you living water. And she said, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it? He said, do you notice Jesus never answered that question? He never answered that question. He could have said, yes, I'm greater than your father Jacob. Mm -hmm. But he did not. He just went on in another direction. Some of you have allowed your children to talk you into things because you kept on trying to answer that question. When you should have said, that's it. Process the question. And guess what? It'll help you be more spiritual. It'll simplify your life. It'll remove frustration. You're spending too much time arguing with people and trying to answer questions that even if you had an answer, it still would not help you. And as a result of that, and then when you get frustrated, then they step back and say, now what kind of Christian are you? See, it's a set up question. And the devil has set you up. And some of us, he keeps setting us up every day. And it wasn't. The question that got us in trouble, it was how, because see, sometimes after you start trying to answer people's questions, then you start calling them names, you idiot. <laughs> and then you start minimizing their intelligence. Mercy. And then uh, and, and the devil just stands back and says, man, I've got them going today. <laughs> so you got to understand that. Now learn how to answer questions. What is the question that's perplexing your heart today? Maybe you've come today and you said, your question is, does, does God really care about me? Sure he does. He, he cares so much about you that he has made it possible for you to live forever with him. Amen. Away from all of the frustration and the frictions of life. He has created a place called heaven and and people argue about is it up or is it down and if you're in australia is it down for them listen wherever it is i'm gonna be okay wherever it is if it's in anderson south carolina i'm gonna be okay listen wherever wherever the lord places me when this is it's going to be okay it's going to be a celebration so guess what i don't have to argue with the watchtower witnesses about whether or not we're going to be on earth that, just I just want to be wherever it is. Listen, and, and you can be there if you make preparations. But you, you, you can't get there on human merit. You will get there because God has assigned you to be there. And he assigns those who trust in the resurrection of Jesus. Who believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrected Savior. Who repent of sin, confess unto be Lord in Christ. Who identify with him in the waters of baptism. He will cancel out your debt of sin. Now sometimes people say that, that's, that seemed too easy. Listen, do you realize that the best things in life are gifts? Amen. The best things in life are gifts. 
You don't have to work for them. They are gifts. And when you receive gifts, and so what God has done, he wants to give us the gift of eternal life. And he gives it to us because we trust and obey him. Amen. 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 So I'm going to ask you today, will you trust God Amen. and obey him? Amen. If he can put a son up yes, he can. that was coming up when I was born yes. and is still coming up yes. on precise time. Yeah. Matter of fact, the timing is so precise that they can predict years down the road what time the sun is going to peep over the horizon in Anderson, South Carolina. Right. Why? Because it's precise. Right. It's precise. Yeah. If God can, can, can create the sun yeah. that does what it does, right. then I have no further questions. Amen. I have no further questions. Zero. If he can do that, I'm fine. Right. If he can do that. If he can create a sun that makes droopy plants stand up straight in the morning Amen. and makes stand up plants droop in the evening, Amen. I have no further questions. Yes, he can do everything I need done if he can do that. Right. So the question is, will you trust him? Yes. You say, but I still have some questions that are unanswered. Trust him. Amen. Trust him. Amen. He has Put enough $2 in your account to convince you he'll put $500 in. He, he, he's done enough to convince you to trust him. In just a moment, we're going to be standing and singing a song of encouragement. And if you have come to the point where you're going to trust him, then we ask you to believe that he's the resurrected Savior. Repent of your sins. Confess him to be Lord in Christ. And we'll baptize you. And God has promised to cancel out your debt of sin. And add your name to the Lamb's book of life. And then he doesn't leave you by yourself. He has promised to walk with you everywhere you go. Hush you through the adversities of life. And though whatever happens, the next time a person asks you some ungodly questions, God will be right there with you. He'll be there. As a matter of fact, he told his people on one occasion, said when they ask you questions, so don't even think about what you're going to say. I'll tell you when they ask you. And guess what? He did. If you have been agonizing over questions that you've been allowing those questions to keep getting you into trouble, stop it. I don't know about you, but it has shown up here to me. So when your troubles come, just hold the God's unchanging hands. You might have fought some trials. You might have fought some tribulations here this morning. You might be a little weary, but I can't.